Okay, we can talk about it. We can talk about Sentry Defense. Let's talk about the Anvil Operation. And we've had a few days now. The time has come. We've played pretty much everything there is to play right now with it, right? You got the updates. Wasn't like anything too crazy or anything like that. But this Anvil Operation is something exactly 343 has been needing to do for the longest time. And just hasn't really done that. And what I mean is, one provide like a cool armor set to unlock that people will actually look at and go like, hey, that's kind of cool looking. Cause I think the armor set looks awesome. It looks definitely much more, like I said earlier, like Shredder from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that does like a an elite armor set, but it does look pretty cool though. Like if you don't, if you don't have it in the context of it being modeled off of an elite, you're like, okay, this armor looks sick, right? Looks like kind of like some edgy sci-fi armor set. We were like, it's supposed to be in Elite, you're like, eh, I don't really see that. Tragedy recognizes the two, so he's not the only one that saw that as well. We'll open up the game here. We'll go step by step to kind of check out exactly what's all the good stuff, what's all the bad stuff, and you know, everything in between, because there's always a an in-between part when it comes to the good stuff that comes with Halo, right? <laughs> Mainly because when the, the, uh, the update first went live, I wasn't able to enjoy any of it, <laughs> because Xbox Live went down as soon as the Anvil operation went live, and that was, you know, I stayed on stream with you guys. I wanted to stick through it with it and, you know, be able to experience it with you guys, play some games with y'all. And then, um, well, Xbox was like, how about now? But luckily nowadays we can log back in and uh, we have a chance to play. So I think the big thing we need to check out is definitely the, uh, the new map and also the new mode century defense which i think is actually pretty freaking awesome this mode i'm actually i played a bit of it last night played a little bit of the night before as well actually pretty dang fun i'm not gonna lie 343 has been needing to do for the longest time because like there's so much stuff already in halo infinite that they can just like repackage things and put it back together to something that would actually really be fun for people to enjoy I think this was like a community made mode if I remember correctly. They did a fantastic job with it. I mean, yeah, it's, just, it's BTB with a different type of objective, but the new game mode is sick. Yeah, like as Alex said, like it's fun. Like this actually like makes me want to jump in and play Halo, which I haven't had that feeling with Halo Infinite in the longest time. I think mainly just because it's a, it's a new experience, but something that's familiar, but new at the same time. And also bringing in the new map command really does kind of help liven things up, which by the way, even though Command not might not be like the flashiest looking map ever made, like it looks pretty standard stuff, I had nothing too crazy. But after playing it, I'm like, oh my god, the readability on this map is incredible. That's because it's forged by Blaze. He goes by Blaze Lightcap, uh, Bla Blaze Dylan. Actually, uh, he started working over at Ubisoft Montreal recently as a level designer. This guy was also one of the lead people behind Mythic Arena. That's what it was. Yes, that's right. He had it written down right here. December 5th, 2019. I was right. I think it kind of came through when it comes to the map command. There's so many little interesting spots as well that come into this map that really help it stand out. You guys, that's not the flashiest kind of visual, right? It kind of looks like just like live fire, but like bigger kind of thing. But I feel like it does a great job of providing easy to read movement and design as well. Design like the gameplay is good on it. It's kind of do a quick little walkthrough to kind of show you what I'm talking about like how it's so easy to, to read this map like it was, it's such an intuitive map that I can't praise it enough of how well made it is there was one part I wanted to actually show that was like I think it was really kind of showed a good example of like one way of being able to like traverse the map in a non-obvious way like this section right here so if I wanted to get up here, you probably think, okay, I need to like go around over here and walk up this pathway. But if you kind of like notice, you're like, oh, hey, that kind of looks like it juts out just a little bit, just like just enough, right? Where I can probably jump on this, jump to that, and then get up to here. If I wasn't bad at the game, I can actually clamber. There we go. That's what I, that's what I meant to do. All right. <laughs> so maybe I just like was timing it improperly, but like I kind of jumped up like this and then went over like this. There we go like that, which I think is like a really great example of being able to utilize environments it kind of look like it's part of the level, but actually, actually have it be functional as well. As you can see, you can do it on this side as well. Jump over here like this, like that, no problem. Rather than taking the walkways, which is really nice. This is where it really hit me when it came to this level being designed properly, I should say, for easy readability, right? So if I wanted to go, when I was like, wanted to go for that repair field, I was like, okay, so I'm just gonna try to make a straight-ish line possible. Cause like being from here, I'm like, okay, most likely I've had to like go take a left and take a right right I think that would make sense and then i was like okay what's gonna be the weird way i'm gonna have to go find the how to get there like no it's just a simple little stairway walk straight right up to here and you grab it and then you have these nice little vents down here you can jump down because it's a bit of a trap you get your stuff stuck in 
you know, able to jump down, may possibly go for rockets as well down here. And that's one of the things I've really kind of was like, oh man, I was like, I was so glad that like it wasn't such like a a zigzaggy maze to get up to where like that repair field is so like it might not be like the fa flashiest looking map I'm feeling probably blaze had to probably put it together real quick and then generally oftentimes when it comes to forge maps that oftentimes they kind of nerf them a little bit just for like performance sake right because like right now i'm running around I'm getting like 120 110 frames even though i should be getting like 144 right but it's just like little things like that make a huge difference when it comes to the like, gameplay of a map like, look, look at this right here. look at that little jump say i just forgot a little jump spot right there from just playing just now you know that was put there on intentionally like if someone can like actually like figure out how to jump like that if i can actually you know have decent movement in the game you can see what i'm talking about just like these little things like this around the map where i can like jump around like this and jump over like that player creativity exactly what you need and that's exactly the stuff that like i think is amazing about this map and that i know blaze put that there on purpose and it's so cool that stuff like that is in the game so yeah you know this map you know, might not be the flashiest map but it gets the job absolutely done i think it's a fantastic addition i hope it stays within infinite for the longest time obviously ignore the skill issues okay there was no skill issues having to happen on that map that was strictly that was my keyboard yeah it was my keyboard's fault it wasn't mine at all why i was able to make those jumps and we can talk about a little bit about sentry defense right what are you guys thoughts on sentry defense i've already seen some people in the chat say it's pretty awesome but i wanted to hear what you guys if anyone else in the chat has like opinions on it does everyone pretty much in agreement? like sentry defense is a pretty awesome mode do you think it's a game mode that's like oh my god like this needs to stay in halo or do you feel like that's a little variation but something that maybe not would stick around super often it's definitely a button in the stockpile i can tell you that much i think it's a really cool variation on what 343 has within halo if it had to be able to mix up the gameplay enough to where it feels familiar right like you're just being played just regular btb but it gives you a different sense of objectives it just changes the way people play the map right be able to focus in these two separate locations. I also think it's really great to have an A and B bomb site basically to attack from. You know, it doesn't condense all the action into one singular location. I haven't really found a really effective way to play the mode. I feel like it's something probably like grabbing a vehicle, finding a cheeky angle and just being able to lay in them while the other team is kind of like oblivious of that type of angle. Cause I, I do feel like there is some form of like a cheese to play the mode but i haven't experienced that yet i haven't seen anybody else cheese the mode yet either uh we're actually you see right here in this gameplay i actually grabbed a uh repair field which is part of the mode which i think is crucial to make, help add a whole nother level of, a new level of dynamicism to the mode as well where like being able to repair your century i think is super great but you can see right here when i throw this onto the uh, my uh century right here can't throw it on there you see the health recharge? I was expecting to go like fully rehealed back up and be like overpowered almost, but like being a massive way to be able to bring your century back into the game. But I think it repairs it about like 25% of the health, something like that. So it doesn't really do like an insane kind of amount of health, which I know, for like a power up that's like only the only one on the map, it'd be like the, the main power up on the map, right? I feel like it's something that needs to be like almost kind of like a game changer kind of experience. And I didn't really get that when it came to use, utilizing the repair field on it. It helps like the heavy be a little bit more impactful. I think for the first iteration, I think it's good though. They, they got, that might be just me being picky and not really, they, maybe they play tested it being like fully repairable. Maybe they found it being a bit like frustrating for the other team, right? Where you make all this progress and then someone just grabs a regen field and heals up your sentry so i can see that being a bit of annoyance for the other team but you know you don't want to lose that progress but then it also might drag the match out a little bit since you have two sentries you need to get take, taken care of so you know i can see the the yin and the yang to that uh, decision right there only complaint is the sound your sentry makes when being attacked uh there should definitely be a sound but currently one is obnoxious yeah i can agree with that one matt that ticking sound that you hear while you know your sentry is taking damage i feel like is a bit annoying i do feel like that's just like the the way they had to do it to make it so then players knew that their base was under attack right because probably normally you hear like sentry under attack save your sentry or something like that you know obviously you can't make up that voice line within forge how do you notify the player that isn't looking at the objective directly how when their base is being attacked you kind of have to do it that way and yeah it can be a bit annoying hearing like all that clicking noise so much but i think it's just kind of one of those trades you have to make for the tools that are given to the forgers right now that's the best way they can do it so i kind of agree with it because i feel like if you didn't have that ticking noise then it'd be so often you can just like stealth destroy the century without anyone ever really catching on to what you're doing i think that's just one of those trades i think that you had to make with with the mode or like i was mentioning earlier i think this really helps out with my biggest gripe with halo infinite is that i just need something 
new to do in the game, man. Because, like, when they're, like, doing, like, testing for, like, multi-team, I'm like, I don't know, I really don't care. 343 and Halo just try to capitalize on nostalgia or things that are missing within the game. And I just want something new, man. You know, I'm tired of just reliving the same things we've been playing for the past, like, 20-some-odd years or whatever. Like, give me something new. But I really like the mode a lot. I also check out the, uh, the Operation Pass here. Even though Halo Waypoint said that it was a thousand credits to buy the Premium Pass, it's actually 500, right? It says 500 here, but on the Waypoint it says 1,000 for whatever reason. I thought they bumped the price. I thought they doubled the price overnight. This is actually probably one of the better Premium Pass bundles that we've ever had. I still hold the Classic Assault Rifle model as the best Premium Bundle bonus kind of deal, but you get the coating, you get a new Rocket Launcher model, so. I think for 500 credits, that's fair. But also when it comes to these passes that, but, uh, I don't know, how do you guys feel about these passes nowadays that you just kind of earn Spartan points and an armor set when it comes to these battle, like the operation pass, we'll say battle pass, operation pass. Cause I think it kind of just slims, cuts out all the filler stuff, right? Cause really when you're playing through the operation passes before, you just wanted the armor set, right? The coatings weren't that interesting. Who cares about emblems and backgrounds, right? And you can't customize it and make it your own. So I think it just kind of, to me, I feel like it kind of slims out, cuts out all the fat and just kind of gives you exactly what you need. But I just feel like it's like less exciting when you receive like a thousand Spartan points. You're like, eh, thanks. Like I know that yeah, you got the exchange, right? You can go into and you, know, you can spend your points there as well. But I just like, I just like, it doesn't, it doesn't feel as exciting when you are unlock like a thing you can use in the game you know what i mean actually talking about the exchange here guys uh good news if you wouldn't some of the prices on the exchange actually was recently dropped to be a little bit more manageable for people the halo infinite team has lowered the prices of the gray avarice and the new dynasty armor coatings in the exchange from 30,000 spiral points to 20,000 spiral points if you already purchased these items uh the excess 10,000 spiral points are now added back to your balance which nice Hey, look at that. Kind of nice, right? Making these Spartan point challenges far more obtainable. Because 30,000 was pretty steep. I, I think when we worked out the math previously, it was like if you played every single day and completed every single challenge, got the weekly ultimate, right? Every week, you'd have to play for like a month straight, month and a half straight or something like that to just earn 30,000 points, which seemed a bit steep when all you were getting before was just like a coding, right? Making it 20,000, yeah, it's still pretty steep. I understand like there's probably the, some items that they, if you put some new items in into the shop, right? Like this, it's actually kind of a cool like gray looking coding, right? Especially with that Under Armour set right there, that it kind of gives people like long-term end of the stick kind of grind that I think that they wanted to provide people that keep that engagement going when it comes to Halo Infinite's uh, play time for the most part. So. I get it, 20,000 is still a little steep, but it's definitely much more manageable. There's one thing I need to mention too about just like Halo Infinite just in general right now is the match composer just feels super off. Right now my selection for modes that I have right here, it says a minute and a half when it comes to match times. You know what modes I have selected in here? Community Team Slayer, Slayer BRs, Team Slayer, Slayer BRs. My match time is a minute and a half? Do people just not want to play Slayer in Halo anymore? I, don't know, I just feel like the UI when it comes to the match composer is a lot. Like I don't want to like go through 47 different playlists to select which ones I do and do not want to play. I mean, I'm glad people had that option, but I don't know, maybe like take out just like Team Slayer and move it into like its own like dedicated playlist. That you would find like out here right so i'm sure like most, most people are just gonna jump in with like where's slayer i think that's some exceptions to the rule you need to have that which is like another downside to this whole progression system that 343 has with halo infinite right when it comes to, like especially like this anvil operation right where i don't want to spend the 500 credits on this right i'm just not going to so when i play halo i want to make progression on this because i want to unlock the armor set so like i feel like being like this live service kind of model with not being able to switch back without having you know, freely uh, with the Trinity's operations, I feel like it really kind of kills the custom game aspect of like the custom game browser, right? Because well, how many pages do we have for here? We have what, two and a half pages of custom game browser. A lot of kind of duplicates mixed in here as well. But like on MCC, you see it all over the place when it comes to people playing the custom game browser, but in Halo Infinite, even with an like insanely great forge mode i just feel like it, not a lot of people are playing it but i think it's kind of directs people into playing matchmaking because of the way the, the progression works within the game and i just feel like that's a, just a big downside to when it comes to go, moving live service like the way like like this the rate that you earn xp and cussing is much slower than you do 
by just playing matchmaking. For custom games being such a crucial part of Halo's memory, right? Oh, like everyone always remembers like the nostalgia of like playing customs with your friends all the way back in like Reach and earlier. But there have been some fantastic game apps that have been created uh, within Halo Infinite's community that are going to be coming into matchmaking undead living the undead right or whatever it's called is a perfect example of that that's how that's how i feel but yeah for the anvil operation because we know that operations right they're more kind of just sustained content right they're nothing really anything that get people like, like super excited to jump in and play but this is probably the first operation that came in i'm like oh i want to jump in and play that this is actually this new mode century defense is actually more exciting to me than like a new dev map that we had like with illusion with the first operation that was like yeah it was fun i played it interesting little game mechanics but again you're, at the end of the day you're just playing slayer again at least this is different it's a unique aspect brings a little bit of pve and elements into the mode for big team battle i think the mode's fantastic the map is really great like we showcased earlier the armor set that you earn within the operation is really nice again i do have my gripes it just feels a little less exciting when you earn like spartan points compared to like an actual thing of course then you get those things through the exchange now but ultimately if you played a lot like i have because i have like 800 close to 900 hours into this game i've have unlocked a lot of the, the things that people want so then like it's actually less content than the a normal operation but again like we're kind of like waning off of halo infinite right there is an end date to this game when that end date is we don't know only 343 has a general idea and although i think for what it is and what we're where we're at for infinite I think Anvil was probably might be the best operation that we've had. I mean, uh, do I sound crazy for saying that? I think I think the new map command and Century Defense really carry the mode, but at least it's something new, exciting that gets me want to jump in, gets me wanting to jump in and play.